If you are not able to walk into your bathroom right now, look yourself in the eyes, in your pupils, like look into your soul and tell yourself that you love you like with conviction. If you're not able to do that, then you have to work on that immediately. Hello, I'm Martin John, and you're listening to the Recover Yourself podcast. In this episode, I'm speaking with Thomas Freeman, who is the founder of the organization, The Coming Home Coalition, where with as little as $1 a month, you can help returning citizens reconnect with their families and healthy communities to heal the trauma brought about by the industrial prison system. Creating chaos is so easy, and most of us aren't even aware that it is something we can choose to not do. Thomas and I really get into what it looks like to be cool, not only in the sense of who you are, but even in how we react to the things around us. Thomas Freeme, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. I've been waiting on this for, for a couple of weeks now. Yeah. yeah. Very excited to be here. Well, I'm, I'm excited to have you. And you and I are going to be sitting down and talking today about how we are chaos creators. And that is a big deal because when we are recovering ourselves, we want to recover our whole self. We want to recover the self that is not running around building chaos in our lives. And when we are out there and when we are not aware of ourselves and we're living under the influence of so many things, well, we can easily cause chaos because we start arguing for those things that we are living under the influence of. Like I know so many people that like argue for the economic system and the way that we the way that we you know are consumers in this world because they are living under its influence. I know for myself when I was out there drinking and using, I argued for drugs and alcohol. I argued for the the use and for my continued use of those things and. And um, running in gangs was a, a way that I could communicate and could commune with other people. And yet, all of the arguments that I was making was just arguments for more chaos. And so I would love to uh, just like put the ball in your court in terms of starting us off and talking about what is it? Why, why and, and, and how can we observe ourselves as chaos creators. Well, I mean, you, 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 you hit it right on the head. You know, we make excuses for ourselves and we don't realize that we're doing it or, or maybe we do. Maybe some do, some don't. I think I was always conscious of the fact that I was making excuses for myself, for my behaviors and what I was doing. You know, I was, uh, I was a drug dealer, you know, and that's all the way that I knew how to survive. I hated being who I was because there were there were things that I wanted ever since a child. And I, for whatever reason, I just molded my brain into thinking that the only way I knew how to do it was by getting, you know, into selling drugs and such. And that whole lifestyle that ensues within that. But it was always making excuses for the reasons why I was doing what I was doing. Um, it, it just for what we'll probably get into, but for me, ultimately, at the end, I started to understand that we're projectors. You mm -hmm. know, when you start to understand what we are as as far as creators, we say that we're creators. We know that we're creators. We create. You sit down, you pick up a pencil, you you make a drawing from your imagination. That's a creation. We're creators. If you think about that in a large scale and everything that you do, that means we're creating all day long from our thoughts. So if that's the case, then then when we look around and we see our, our lives are so disheveled, then we have to start questioning ourselves like, why am I creating this? This is a chaotic lifestyle. It's a chaotic creation. So you're, the chaos is right in front of us, yet we'll make excuses that it's not. You know, oh, I don't have time to clean up. I'm not busy. Or, or, you know, I, I'm too busy or, or we make these excuses to cover up our chaos. But I think it's until we realize that we're, we're the creators, we're projectors. Everything that we see around us is, is a projection of our imagination. You know, I oh. say this, uh, I say this thing all the time. I say, if there's anything in your life you don't like, there's something about you you don't like. You know, and you got to we have to be mm. able to look at that which we don't like out in the world with an open mind. Now that's not always possible, 
I mean, it's not it's not like we can always reach that point of being able to question those things. But um, so you're right. I mean, I believe I believe in what you're saying 100 percent. And I and if I wasn't able to recognize that I projected everything out into the world, I wouldn't be able to be here right now right? because I would have been a victim. I would have been a victim of the chaos that I created. You know, every time we get mad, every time we get frustrated, what we're doing is we're, we're, we're poking something within us that, is, that, that hurts and that we're not connected with. You know, I know um, I was talking with you just a little bit ago about my ability to receive has expanded recently, mainly because I got mad at other people for not being able to receive from me. And what ended up happening was that opened me up to understand that there were things in my life I wasn't able to receive. And now, as I open myself up to the idea of receiving, everybody around me is receiving from me too. And now there's this open communication of reception. And that's such a beautiful thing because I got to do my work of recovering who I was. When's the last time you sort of like looked at something and was able to like look at your chaos and like even even like in your sobriety and your work and everything that you're doing, like what was the last thing that you had to like really look at within yourself that you were projecting? Mm. You know, it's the most frustrating thing to me now. And I'm and I'm noticing because I'm I'm very I'm in a I'm in a high state of tension right right now. Mm-hmm. Very I'm, I'm just in a very traumatic, ongoing, chaotic lifestyle right now as we speak. And it and and it's sort of out of my control, but however, it all leads to my decisions, my factoring, right? So it's understanding that and and reconciling that within my mind as to the events that are occurring now is is because of my bad decision making several months back years back whatever Mm -hmm. and it's it's understanding that the the environment that i see is the environment that created who i was if i can say that so being around my family now because i i was incarcerated for 13 years straight Mm -hmm. right and within those 13 years, people grow, they change, you know, and, and things of that nature. And then when I come home, a different person than who I was, a lot more enlightened than what I was, I can see the, the constructs of how I became who I was through my family, their decisions, the chaos that they're in this family structure, right, that's now involved my child. So it's, it's seeing that and seeing this ticking bomb in front of you and, and you knowing it's a ticking bomb, but yet nobody's listening to you, you know, Oh, you're, you're crazy. That's not a ticking bomb, you know? So it's, it's weighing that and trying to keep your sanity within that and your structure within that. And and not losing your yourself that's the main important thing is is not allowing myself to fall back into that chaos but to remain outside of it to remain the observer knowing that i can only control what i can control and and to to know and have peace in mind to know that i'm doing everything that i know how to do with that's within my control that's that's it partner And, and that's how i'm remaining on course because at the end of the day child mother father brother sister best friend they are not your life you have one life this is your life and if if you if you feel any sort of transgression within you about helping another person or anything like that then you're going against what your life is. You're, you're going against yourself and that's going to cause chaos. You know, I talk to parents all the time about the idea that, you know, like your kid isn't yours. Like, I know, I know we like to talk about it like that. Like it's your kid. It's my son, my daughter. But this is, this brings you too close to home. 
because that kid's got their own life. And that's always a difficult thing. You know, you talk about talk about your having been incarcerated for 13 years. And, and you know, I, I want to talk a little bit about benefit of the doubt. Here you are incarcerated for 13 years. Ain't nobody believe nothing about what you say. Hmm. Right. And then we talk about like, you know, like you can have someone who in your life who's never been incarcerated. You can talk about someone in your life that gets the benefit of the doubt. And they might just be chaos creating mm. left and right, like even with your child. <laughs> Amen. And, and the benefit of the doubt that they get goes a long way. Why? Because you've been incarcerated for 13 years to so show me you have value. And then all of a sudden, we got to prove ourselves to some motherfucker that doesn't know Jack. They never spent a minute in their own mind. And you spent 13 years there. And that ain't given any credit. Well, I mean, amen, brother. And thank you for, for elaborating that the way that you did, because it, it was it was eloquent. And that's the, this is the issue. Right. <clears throat> I'll be on Zoom calls with representatives and, and these people are attorneys and such. And and the thing of it is, is that they will discount what I have to say about my experience because they've been told differently in their in their schools of knowledge. Right. And now I just want to step in and say that is them living under the influence of their own fucking bullshit. <laughs> entitlement. It's entitlement. It's because I have this certificate that says that this 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 multi-million dollar school gave me, right? I have mm -hmm. listen, I paid millions for this education that I have. Mm -hmm. Okay. So who are you to sit here and tell me that my education is wrong? Like you were in prison. Uh we're talking about prison. <laughs> right? I was in prison. I am the experience. See, the thing of it is, is that your schools of knowledge only give you the knowledge and how to keep stats That's on right. me. Right. <laughs> I'm the experience. And yet you're negating that experience because it goes against what you think that you have is knowledge. I'm telling you that your knowledge is wrong. I seen mm -hmm. it with my own eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, you know it's so funny. I mean, I got I got multiple sclerosis mm -hmm. and I go in and I talk to my I'm doctor funny. and I'm just like, I, you know, I study this 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You work on it in your, in, while you're at work, however many hours you work every week. Like I live with this. So, and that goes into all aspects of our lives, politics. Everywhere. We have politicians up here talking about our poor communities and yet they've never been in the poor community. Mm -mm. Right. And when they do come into the community, they come in with bodyguards, right? right? Because they don't, they don't associate to them, but yet they're up there making decisions for, for us. You know, we can look at that in, in our drug rehabilitation programs, right? We can look at it in so many different aspects of where our help is supposed to lie at. They will not let the community leader in to guide these lessons, right? They want these lessons to be taught in a certain aspect. So not to get too conspiratorial, but we have to understand at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if you truly do not like who you are, the only change is going to come from you, no one else. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking for some sort of outside source, albeit God, right? If you're looking for some outside source to change you, it's never going to happen. And That's you're right. going to keep failing no matter how many, how many months, years you stop, right? If you think that this program is the reason why you stopped, you're going to fail. Boom. Um. Oh, <laughs> that's it in a nutshell. You have to know that you are the reason why you want to stop. For me, I didn't want to be a criminal anymore. I never wanted to be a criminal. I hated it. I mm. hated being viewed that way to the fact that where I was lying to people, telling people I wasn't a criminal, manipulating their mind into thinking that I was a good person, yep. committing crimes behind their back because I did not want to be viewed that way. So at the end of the day, it was stop telling myself that I'm a good person and start telling myself that I want to be a good person. And that is what gave me the motivation to start moving forward into that realm. And I work you, on that every day. You know, I look at that and I, and I can't help but like, you know, make sure, I just want to make sure that everybody listening and everybody that's going to hear this realizes that we were able to get to a place of recovering ourselves and be able to recovering our lives, be able to recovering to, to, to know that we're at the core of it because we gave, we, we found that we had given up so much of ourselves mm -hmm. 
that it was imperative to recover it. Now, when we talk about politicians, when we talk about doctors, when we talk about um, you know, lawyers and judges and all of these people that are along, along that line that are making the rules for us when, when we're the ones looking to them for help very often, right? that's what we're told to do at least. Right? So we're under the influence that we're gonna get help. And when we don't, you and myself had to pick ourselves up and say, you know what? Yes, for me, AA did me wonders for a little bit, mm-hmm. but I had to walk away from that because I had to be the thing in the end that I was growing for. It couldn't be a program. It couldn't be anybody. It couldn't be anything. I wasn't going to overesteem. You know, I wasn't going to overesteem Bill. I wasn't going to overesteem anybody else, like just because that's what the program told me I had to do. And, and as I, as I kind of discovered myself, like I started realizing, and it took me years of really kind of digging to be able to realize that, wait, I know more than these other motherfuckers, these people who have all of their degrees, these people that have, have every, like all of the, all of the positions of power. I know a lot more than them. All of this stuff kind of just points to the fact that we're looking to people in our society. We're looking to people who are creating chaos in their lives and subsequently in ours because they aren't recovering themselves. Our politicians aren't recovering themselves. They're recovering from a loss or they're recovering from a potential loss because they're not living in the moment. They're not living right now. They're not living for themselves. They're living for their position. They are, they are under the Amen. influence of so much. They're under the influence of so many other people, ideas and things that they don't even know what their own thoughts are. Amen. I mean, that's, that's it, partner. And, and that's what we, the people, you know, we have to understand because we go into a doctor's office and we see this man with a white coat and we automatically assimilate him to, 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 to knowledge, mm-hmm. right? And he's more superior than I am. We've already committed to this in our minds. We don't know nothing about this person. Don't know nothing about who this person is, what he was doing before he came to work. Nothing about this human being. It's the fabric that he's wearing, mm-hmm. right? And the environment that he's created around himself. So, but we trust in the fact that, yes, we, we believe in our medical system and we believe that doctors are knowledgeable in the human anatomy and things of that nature. And I think there comes to a point to where it turns from medical science to, to opinion in a sense, because a doctor may tell you, well, this is what's going on with your heart, right? That's the medical science. And then right after that, he's going to tell you, you only have six months to live, or he's going to tell you, you know, if you don't start doing this, this is going to happen, you know? So it's, these doctors, these, these professionals that start injecting their opinion into our, our lives influences us greatly. Like we leave that doctor's office, we're crying, right? We're crying, we're upset, we call our family, we tell our family these things. And then nine times out of 10, what happens, happens because we're, we're already in that direction of, of creating that, manifesting that, that said thing. We're versus, now under the influence of the idea of some other motherfucker who just said, well, in this book, it says. And, and that's what happens, right? Because now, now this, this upset person goes home, explains to the husband, wife, they bring all their family in. Now you're, you're constantly subjected with all of this, this negative emotion. Like every phone call is how you doing? Are you okay? Make sure you, it's just a constant state of, anxiety constant state of depression all because this doctor injected his opinion into you that's right so so it's like when i go to the doctor now i understand that this man is more knowledgeable than me in in the human anatomy all i want is the facts doc that's it what's wrong with my knee this is what's wrong okay i know enough about my body and about myself to take what you said and apply it to me that's right you know but if i don't have that knowledge of self then then I'm 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 open for anybody's opinion about me. 
and that goes. And you to, might be, and you might just be open to like, like to being a sucker. Well, that's just it. Because where does the rabbit hole end, right? When I'm subjected to to to, to constantly looking for somebody else's praise to to know my worth, what is my worth going to be? Like I'm going to be a, a an emotional wreck. Mm -hmm. You know, because people don't care. People only care for for a certain extent. Yeah, they don't. They 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 can't. You know. And the thing is, is everyone wants to, I mean, how many times have you run across somebody? I know this happens to me a lot. All I want is what's best for you. Hmm. And it's like, mm, you couldn't, if you did, you'd ask me what you thought I thought was best for me first, before you just injecting all your like fear and other stuff on me, just because you can. And you know, when the world, when we're living under the influence of the economic system, the education system, drugs, alcohol, whatever our pacifiers are, when we're living under the influence of our parents, when we're living under the influence of our teachers, our peers, whatever, we're living under the influence of all of that stuff. We are not thinking clearly for ourselves. Mm. We are thinking for the other person and the control that they have over us. And if you have a job, if you're a lawyer, you have been in school successfully for a long period of time. And what I mean by successfully is you were rewarded plenty along the way. And now you got a job and it pays well and you can pat yourself on the back for that. Good on you. But are you currently under the influence of all of those things that got you here? And, and, and what kind of a lawyer does that then make you? Did you learn how to recover yourself after giving up? so much of your life, so much of your personality, so much of who you are so that you could fall into the mold of lawyer that was here well before you ever even thought about being a lawyer. For me, a certificate when somebody tells, and I don't want to knock anybody's work because I know this is work yeah, right, to, yeah. To, to get these, these scholarships and these doctorates. And it's more than what the work that I've done and accomplished for myself. So I don't want to ever negate anybody's work, but all that means to me is you uh, you show me as an intellect you show me as a human being that is able to to record information to have high sustainable conversation to be an intellect you've shown me that you have that possibility for us to sit down and have these conversations right i don't have that so i think a lot of the times that's negated out of me as soon as somebody finds out i've been in prison they automatically negate me as an uneducated, you know, criminal who, you know, don't get it. This is a yeah. lot of what I get. You know, I get a lot of pacification and things, but a lot of when, people patting you on the back. They're happy to know someone. Oh, who yeah, you did great. You really years. changed, buddy. Yeah, you did. You, did great. <laughs> you really. Yeah. you That type of stuff. But it's it's when we sit down and we really get into the roots of the issues. I think a lot of what we've discussed are the roots of the toxicities within us. Right. You know. And, and, and we don't understand that we don't, we're not even cognizant of what we're doing because we're so consumed in life. These people have us working like they've cut our thought process down. Who has time to think about that stuff? Right. And if you're in prison, you got this is time. why I'm trying to get the people to understand. We have to start listening to people like me. Yeah. We have to start listening to, to, to the guys that are coming out of prison who ha are showing themselves to be articulate and educated and who are screaming out loud what's going on because who else has the time to think and study and, and see what's going on other than the prison? Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I, I heard something somewhere as they took a bunch of grad students into a prison and the grad students left and they were like, oh, my God, those, be, those they're people. What, what, what would you think? What did you think? You fucking there's been many experience, uh, experiments. There's been experiments where they've taken average inmates and lined them up against Harvard students and their IQ tests were, were much higher than the Harvard students. Yeah. The thing of it is and, and, and see, like there's juveniles, there's juveniles. There are human beings right now that have been incarcerated since they were a juvenile, 13, 14 years old. You know, I think now they're, they're being released because of the, the recent law change, but these are grown men now. Yeah. And I just want to know 
how that human brain has formed being your whole life incarcerated. Like I want to sit down and have discussions with these people because your whole thought process is completely different from most of society. Yeah. And then we're releasing them going, good luck. <laughs> right. And to society, you know, and then when they mess up they're you're like, oh, well, look, we should have never let you out. That's right. <laughs> Like we're, we're the chaos creators just by doing that, just by, just by, just by having a, a, an expectation of another human being like, and, you know, I look at mental health, we're coming out of mental health awareness month and all of this mm -hmm. stuff. And, and I look at mental health and I see, you know, everybody's normal. Well, why do, why do we say people are normal or, or abnormal to begin with is, That's is what to... I'm saying is to just make myself feel normal. Because if That's I right. see something that I don't recognize as something I would do, I would call that abnormal just to make myself feel normal. That's right. And mm -hmm. when we do that, we start creating chaos because we're starting to create a expectation of what the world should be. And I don't know about you, but the world isn't what we think it should be. It's just what it is. And it's a lot bigger than we are. It's a lot bigger than what our minds can take in. And if we just think that, oh, well, the world is this box of understanding, well, we've already missed the mark. Mm -hmm. well, what I like to tell my people is, you're perfect. Like I am Damn right. a perfect <laughs> person. I never say that I'm not perfect. We like to say that about ourselves, but I am perfect. And what makes me perfect is there is no other Thomas free me that work walks this the, the face of the planet is me mm -hmm. there's nobody else that walks talks thinks acts like i do that makes me perfect yes right that is my perfection my uniqueness my my this is it this is all you get mm -hmm. and and that is what allowed me to come into my own and say you know what i want to be the best version of me because it's it there's only one there's one. So what, what kind of imprint do I want to leave on humanity being it, you know, and, and that, uh, that had a lot to do with my, my thought process and my change. You, you know, know, I love that. I mean, I say, I say to my people, like, don't let your definition of perfection rob you of yours. Mm -hmm. You know, like this idea that like, you know, I get all, I, I, I hear it all the time. Like, we're not perfect. We're not perfect. We got to embrace our imperfections. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this, shut your ass. Yes, we are. Yeah. Damn and, right and we it. are. And when you point at somebody else and you, and you look at her and, and, you know, the female looking at another female and she's like, man, her body is perfect. You know, I wish my body was that way. No, her body is perfect for her, but your yeah. body is perfect for you. Damn right. You know what I mean? And it's it's coming into that. What it is a what is it about your body that you don't like that you don't register with? Mm. Fix that. Put now, the now fix into that, that here. Right. Fix that in your head. Not fix that. Fix that in your body. You don't like you don't like this. You don't like that. Or I don't like this. Or I don't like that about myself. Well, you know, and I and I and I ask this question in my you know social and other stuff like that. Like, are you the coolest person you know? Because hmm. if not, fuck are you doing? I'm telling you, that's how I feel. I'm like, man, listen, I'm I'm the coolest guy you'll ever know. And if that's you don't right. like that, you can kick rocks because <laughs> I've lived that life of trying to to live and be how others thought I should be. You would be a lot cooler if you did this. Oh, OK, well, let me go do this then. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And then I would go do this. And then, no, it was the same. Nothing changed. No. People would be like, ah, you know, whatever. But if you did this, you would be really cool. Okay, well, let me go do this over here. Yeah. Eh, you know, but I'm a puppet. The whole time That's I'm right. a puppet. You're a prisoner. I'm a prisoner. Like you can be a prisoner and you can you can be in jail. You, can yeah, be a you don't need the stigmatic. Here. You do not need the stigmatic gates and fences. That's only there. What those are there is to keep people out. That's See, right. that's the perception. The perception is that those fences are there to keep inmates in. Those fences are there to keep people out. It's to keep the people, the public out of what they're doing inside of prisons. Right. It's to keep them kicking the can down the road of economics, kicking the can down the road of all the bullshit that they're living under the influence of. There's a lot of, and that's the stigma I'm trying to relate you know, no, is a racist. We see these shows like Locked Up and 
and all these prison shows 60 days in and all this stuff. And they try to make it look as real as they possibly can. And, and what hurts this stigma the most is the, is the, the prisoners that come home and start these, these shows where they start glamorizing prison in that sense, because they notice that they get so many likes and subscribes to it that they just fall into this. Oh my God, I got 30,000 subs in a month, you know? And, and it's, it, what, what that does is it forms a generalization in the public's eye that all of us are this way inside a prison when really that's a very small percentage. Most of the people that are in prison, first and foremost, are nonviolent, mm-hmm. right? And these are addicted people, people with mental health issues, not overwhelmingly mental health, but just enough to where they don't know who they are. Right. You know, and they're just confused on how to live life in, in society. And it landed them in prison. These people want to learn. They want to be adaptive. They want to be pillars of their community. They just don't know how to be. Right. Right. But after year, after year, after year, after year, after year, we become bitter. Right. Because I was ready to come home after five years. But yet at that time, I still had another 15 to go. Yeah. You know, so it's it's these things. And then I'm being these people are being released into society, angry and bitter now, old. And like I I want I wanted to be released 15 years ago. I could have done my life would be different. So we have all of this animosity in our communities, you know, and going back to self, we have to understand that we are also surrounded by other individuals that create chaos like we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. If we don't know how to recognize this chaos within ourselves, we're definitely not going to recognize it in other people. And that's the that's at the core of all of this. I know like it may have seemed like we went off on a couple of tangents, but the reality is, is like those lawyers, those teachers, these systems that we have are creating chaos. And we, in order to adapt to that, we as in people who, you know, have not fallen to prison or addiction or other things like that like those are the individuals that have chaos in their lives and don't look at it those of us that have you know come back from addiction prison other sorts of things that some people don't ever come back from when we've been able to look at the way that we've created chaos in our own lives we've been blessed with a new start of a new person of who we are. And those, of, and those that are making the laws for us don't know half as much as we do. Hmm. And they don't, they don't understand what they're doing and what their laws are doing. They don't understand what they're doing because they're projecting their own fears. Under it the puts influence. us in survival mode. We're all working in survival mode. That's what I'm trying to get people to understand. Understand what survival mode is and the decision factoring that comes out of that, how we're put in this in survival mode, right? That is what is important is that every day we're out here just trying to survive, you know, and the chaos that comes out of that. They have us in survival mode, partner. Yeah. And With this fear mongering that they do. That's right. And if you can't, if you can't watch the news and be observant of your body and what's going on, then you're in survival. If you get angry because of somebody's political agenda, you're in survival. If you get scared when they're going to put a prison in your backyard, you're in survival. When you get scared and go to your, go to the only meeting in your community because they're going to bring in a drug and rehab center you're in survival mode that doesn't have anything to do with you and yeah you can find all of the police reports and you can find all of the things and you can throw it all out of proportion but you're doing that because you're living under the influence that you they have wanted you to live under there's a small portion of people that are trying to do really good work and most of us are standing in the way of it because we're creating chaos because there's chaos been created in our lives and we don't know how to stop doing it. How many people have lived under a presumption, a fear 
of, of an experience that they've never personally experienced only because the news tells them that this thing exists. How many people are in fear of sending their children to school because of this mass shooting? Right. But yet there's never been a mass shooting in your, in your neighborhood. Right. And there's never been any violence in your particular school yet. You're so worried about it. And there are so many people projecting. This is the, like we manifest these things. You know, right. it's, it's just understanding that. And that's how, I, that's how I live my life anymore, partners. I just deal with what's in front of me. That's right. You know, if, if, if Putin's got nuclear mi missiles, okay, cool. Right? He that's got right. them. Okay, whatever. <laughs> what am I like, gonna... okay. You know what I mean? What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to go, go build a, a, a big tunnel up under my house you know what i mean and stock it with 10 years if if that's what a person does and that makes you more comfortable with your life then cool i don't cool. knock that that's, that's right. just not me i'm just going to continue and if he launches one and, I, and they say it on the news a missile's on its way okay peace i love you guys you know what <laughs> I mean? and, and, and that's i've it. done I, what i needed to do I've here done what I, i've done everything that i could do you know and, and that's, and that's right. just what it is man that's right you know like and yes there's pain out there, but your pain is connected to your chaos. Simply know who you are. Love yeah. who you are. If you are not able to walk into your bathroom right now, look yourself in the eyes, in your pupils, like look into your soul and tell yourself that you love you like with conviction. If you're not able to do that, then you have to work on that immediately because yeah. there's nobody else that you can tell that to with 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 the, the proper meaning of what the, the word means and, and it, it resonate because you don't even believe that within yourself. Right. You have to know yourself. I love everything about me. Right. I was a criminal. I was a, I was a bad human being. I did bad things. I understand why I did those things. I understand the environment that those things occurred in. All of these things have been like, like you said earlier, that's why I chuckle when you say it, because all of this happens over years. Mm. right of deep deep thought you know what i mean and and it just came to the conclusion that listen all of that made who i am today right now who i am with you i love this person sitting in this chair because the awareness and experience that i have is is very very uh, rare for a human being to have i understand that and i love that about me and i had to have all those experiences because it has allowed me to assimilate. It has allowed me to, 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 to understand so many different people and their pain. And it has allowed me to associate with these people. And it has allowed these people to find comfort in me to open up in ways that they never had before, even with, with counselors. You know, I hear this all the time because I just, people feel like they don't get no judgment from me. That's what everybody you know. tells me. <laughs> well, this is why like, we're together. That's this right. is why this is why things like this come together because like minds come together, you know. But it's it's it was understanding within me that I love me, and there's nothing that nobody could say about me that is going to inflict any harm upon me if I if I don't agree with it. But I have to be one hundred percent. If somebody comes up to me and and calls me a a, a you know a, a whatever name one day right i have to just not react but just ask myself ponder was there something that i did to to cause this reaction from this person right if not then okay this person is having a bad day and i go about my business plain and simple if so then i apologize hey sir you know if i did this and it caused that reaction i apologize you know that's not a reaction i i, I wanted to to cause or however you know, it's and, funny when you say that, you know, about words like douchebag. Anybody call me a douchebag, I'd get upset. That would be the one word you can call me and really fucking get a rise out of me. And, and alternative to your idea, did I do something to get called a douchebag? I say, well, why douchebag? Why is it douchebag for me? And I had to look at all of, the, all of the story I had behind douchebag and say, where am I a douchebag? Once I found where I was a douchebag, I was able to fucking fix or understand myself differently and love myself as a motherfucking douchebag. 
It's all right that I'm a douchebag sometimes. I just got to love it because the fact that I wasn't able to love the fact that I was a douchebag meant, meant I was going to be a prisoner to anybody that knew that. And if you called me a douchebag, I'd get angry. And then I'd be off the charts without being in touch with who I am. And that's how I was a chaos creator within that's my own beautiful. life. Beautiful. That's beautiful, Martin John, because that is a prime example of an example of, of an occurrence that it, that happened between two men, right? And this guy was calling the other guy a pussy. You come on, pussy, blah, 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 this and that. Well, the 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 second man, right, completely wigged out over this word. And mm -hmm. they they went into an altercation, you know. And then the first man that was that was calling him that name was like, why did he react that way? That was uncalled for. I was just, you know, we were just yelling at each other. And it's like, I told him, listen, what inflicts pain upon you may not inflict pain upon another person. Just because somebody can call you a pussy and it doesn't get a rise out of you, it doesn't mean that the next person, it won't. I said, you have no idea how that word inflicts upon that person. That person could have been raped his whole life and that and the rapist could have been whispering that name in his ear. And mm. that is just a trigger for him that if anybody ever called him that again, he would kill. You have yeah. no idea what people go through. That's right. But it goes back to the expectations because what doesn't bother me shouldn't bother you. Mm hmm. Chaos. What's up? Thomas, brother, this is good to talk with you, man. Man, I love it, man. I love these conversations. I have these all the time, man. I just, I love for humans to be able to just be open and just be honest with self with no, no judgment. Just, just listen, man, I love you. You're a human being and I understand life is hard. We all struggle. We're all just trying. At the end of the day, for me, I think we're all just trying to find love, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just the battle of, of, of that. And, and that's my parting, my parting gift, you know, to, to your listener is, is that is my motto of life now is life is a better teacher than me. It's been here longer than I have. It's, it's much more experienced with life than I am. So let me just control what I can control and then have faith in knowing that life has got the rest. However, life deems it to, to handle it. I have to just have faith. Life has been here a lot longer than I have. It's got it. I've done everything that I can. As long as when I lay my head down, I know that I did my best in this particular instance. That's all I can do, brother. And let life be life, man, you know? That's right. Like, because no matter what, it's going to do that. <laughs> no matter what, it's going to do that. <laughs> love I you, love brother. you, brother. Thank you so Absolutely, much. Absolutely, man. You can find links to everything Thomas Freeney is doing in the description of this episode. Please rate and review this podcast and or leave comments for this episode to help me better create helpful content. Support this show at anchor.fm and check out all of the support I offer to individuals and groups on my website, martinjohn.com. I take a limited number of one-on-one -on -one clients each month, so contact me when you're ready to work together. I also recently added a monthly call with me if you're interested in stepping softly into the world of recovering yourself. You can find all of those links below as well. I also accept financial support through Venmo at martinjohn underscore Garcia. So if you benefit from listening to this content, please consider supporting my efforts. If you're in Chicago, you can work with me in person at Satnam Yoga Chicago. You can also find me on the Wisdom app for both content and mentorship. Thank you for listening to the Recover Yourself podcast. And until next time, keep recovering yourself.